Hello, welcome to the Godly Tikuman series. My name is Debbie Allen, your host for today. Now, I'll be talking about strength and weakness. Now, I realize that in our work with God, it takes weakness to receive strength. Um, and I will justify that through the scripture. It, it says in 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9, in the Amplified Version, it says, Therefore, I will all the more gladly boast in my weakness, so that the power of Christ may completely unfold me and may dwell in me. The New King James Version says, Therefore, I mostly, I'm, I mostly gladly, I most gladly will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. The Message Version says, I just let Christ take over. And so the weaker I get, the stronger I become. The NIV Version says, Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness so that Christ's power may rest upon me. Now, um, I want you to take cognizance of the next verse, verse 10, the New, the New King James Version says, Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmity, in reproaches, in needs, persecution, in distress, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. So it means that it takes weakness to, be, to, to get strength. It takes the acceptance that you are weak and you can't do it on your own. That is when you receive strength. I would like to personally say, I've been in situations where I really felt like I can't do it. I really felt like, no, I can't do it on my own. But I asked God for help and I was like, God, if you don't help me, I can't get it. I can remember I, there was a particular day. Yeah, there was a particular day I was meant to lead worship in church. And all through that day, I was out. Like, I was out all the day all through the day i was all sweaty stressed out and i was meant to lead worship in church at the end of the day when i got church was meant to start five o'clock on the dot i got to i got home in fact to now worsen the situation i got home and i, I discovered that um I, I my uniform was not ironed so already i'm late Already, if I, if the uniform was with me, I would have just taken the uniform, go to church straight from where I went to. But I was looking all sweaty and all. In that my sweaty status, I I just got to, I just used oh I used water to to wash my face and I went to iron my clothes. Of course, and that, at that time it was like 15 minutes to five, and I was still at home. So of course, I took bike, I took bike and. I just rushed up. I was ironing my clothes and thank God my sister was around so she helped me to iron my clothes while I just freshened up and changed what I was wearing. So at the end of the day, I got to church like I think 15 minutes after 5 or I think 15 minutes after 5 or dear about. My point is that the person leading praise was already on stage leading praise and I just got in, you know, I just breathed in and all and I'm like, I just breathed in and Everybody was asking me, yeah, you need to, you are the worship leader, you are meant to be informed, blah, 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 blah. I was still, I was just all everywhere. I was just everywhere. At the end of the day, someone helped me to wear my, the right shoe. Someone helped me with the left shoe. Someone was helping me to gather myself, to adjust my uniform. At the end of the day, I got to the front because, of course, the press, the worship leader would go close to the stage so that you'd be able to communicate with the praise leader. So at the end of the day, I got to the front and... It was already two minutes to my uh, ministration, to my worship session. So I was not settled with all the things I had to do that day. I just said, Lord, your word said your strength is made perfect in my weakness. And your word said you uphold me with your right hand of righteousness. Lord, as I go, I don't go of my own accord. I ask that you help me because your word said if, you lift, if I lift your name high, you draw me to. And that was all I said. But in the air, I was, you know, this kind of, I just, I just said, I'm going to go. However it comes out, I don't care. I just said, God, I've asked you for help and all. At the end of the day, you will not believe, 
I didn't even expect it. In fact, the most amazing thing happened because I was meant to lead worship for like, let's say five, uh, five, ten minutes. I ended up leading like 15, 20 minutes or I'm, I'm not sure, but it was just longer than the expected time. So my point is that worship session was intense and it was really, it was really inspiring. And for me, I was blessed personally because it, it was so obvious that I wasn't the one singing. It was so obvious that it wasn't my strength or what I prepared because I was throughout the day I was not okay I was just I was in the market doing different things so my point is at that point I asked God for help and I said God help me because I lack no strength I like I, 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 I lack strength rather so my point is it, in our work with God it takes you to know that it's God's strength that makes you really you know really strengthen it's not really by your physical strength it's not really by how you know you can do some things it's how god enables you to do those things see i like to when i pray i like to say this prayer he said um of course you know the way we worship god is different but i like to call god the god that makes it the god that makes me look like i know what to do you know he there are several times i'm in a fix and i don't have any idea and there are several times you get impromptu ministration and you just have to deliver but in those times what do you do i just ask god for help and i'm like god you know say i'm not prepared but help me and at the end of the day it's in those times where i'm not even i'm not saying that we should not prepare but as at that time i needed the help of god because i needed to minister i can't say oh i'm not prepared so i'm not going to minister but at the end of the day times like that i've noticed that it's always more intense always different because i always you know when i prepare there are times when i prepare and i like because i prepare so i know i'm going to deliver but it now takes you to know that it's not also by your preparation it's not also by how you know how to do things so i just want to say that in our works of life and whatever we do in our career in as a student whatever career you're doing whatever you're doing at the moment learn to accept that it takes the strength of god to really thrive to really do well it takes god's supernatural help if you rely on god's supernatural help you will see that you do amazing things that you would never expect because when you come to the end of yourself that's when god starts i've noticed that when you are like god you know this is it i can't do it again and you ask god for help you just see amazingly little by little little by little you just notice that you have strength for today you have strength for tomorrow and the week is gone you are strengthened and your strength it keeps increasing so i just want to say that i can't overemphasize the power of weak of strength and weakness i know that we are not always weak but whenever we feel weak let's leverage on that weakness and say god i am weak and i need your strength because the bible says that his strength is made perfect in our weakness so if you realize this your work with god will not just be only when you are when you feel like doing things you know there are times when you feel you know the the hype is there the ginger is there so you can do it but our work with god is not only when we feel like it it also takes the extraordinary help of god even in our prayer time our work with god uh we treat there are times when okay let me give you a practical example fasting when you fast as a christian your strength <laughs> will fail you honestly if you're like me your strength will fail you because you know if you're the type that eats, even if you don't eat if, have you noticed that when you fast that's when you feel like eating almost everything that's when one food is smelly one that's when one the aroma of somebody's food is getting to you and you're like wow this person you don't notice that everything is negating what you should do you know so it means that when you rely on the strength and that is how i've been able to fast i fast and i i don't fast that oh this is uh, my strength i you know i this is my capacity so when i started fasting i can remember there are times when i feel like ah, i can't fast for more than uh, from for more than 12 so if i fast from like 9 to 12 i cannot fast again because you know that 12 uh, that's that's when my strength can carry me not knowing that it takes you to realize that it's God's strength that helps you to fast. So at, when I realized that, I started asking God, every time I want to fast, 
I ask God for strength. Lord, I receive your I, Lord, I receive your strength to wait upon you. And at the end of the day, I started noticing that wow, I can fast till three. Then later I noticed I can fast till five, till six. And there are times when I noticed that I can fast in a week. And there I noticed I can fast in 21 days. So my point is everything takes you. Though it is not like what you emphasize, it's not something you plan. But when you rely on the strength of God, it will stretch you. Fine. It will stretch you, but the kind of things you would do, trust me, you would not expect that you can do it. Because Jesus lives inside of you. And he is that strength. The Bible says that if the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, if that same spirit dwells within you, he said he shall quicken your mortal bodies. It means that it will help you.